My name is Jesse Anderson. I'm a production engineering manager here at SpaceX, and I am so excited to be here with you today, bringing you coverage of our first Falcon Heavy mission this year and fifth of all time. Falcon Heavy is essentially three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together, which means it can carry much larger payloads, not only to Earth orbit, but to the Moon and Mars as well. Now, like Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy is a two-stage launch vehicle. Now, the big difference is that Falcon Heavy, the Falcon Heavy first stage is comprised of three cores, whereas Falcon 9 only has one. Falcon Heavy has 28 engines in total. Each of these cores has nine M1D engines, making for a total of 27 engines across all three boosters, which you can see there on your screen. The 28th engine is a Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage and will power the payload to its final targeted orbit. Now, all together, the Merlin 1D engines at the base of Falcon Heavy produce 5 million pounds of thrust. That's equal to 18 747s at takeoff. Now, in fact, the engines produce so much power that we don't run them at full thrust all at once until after liftoff. About two and a half minutes into flight, the two side boosters will separate from the center core and come back down to Earth for simultaneous landings at landing zone one and landing zone two, which you can see there on your screen. As I mentioned earlier, today's launch, USSF-67, is a national security space launch mission for the United States Space Force. Now let's learn a bit more from our customer about today's mission. We depend on space every day to support our way of life, our supply chain, financial systems, weather tracking and power grids, as well as air, land and maritime infrastructure. Our U.S. military is the strongest and best equipped force in the world. In the heavily contested space domain, Space Systems Command leads a team of roughly 15,000 guardians, airmen, civilians and contractors. Headquartered in El Segundo, California, our unbeatable team operates from multiple locations across the U.S. and includes two space launch deltas, SLD-45 at Patrick Space Force Base and SLD-30 at Vandenberg Space Force Base. Through unity of effort across the space acquisition enterprise, Space Systems Command delivers to warfighters integrated and resilient space capabilities through five program executive offices. Assured access to space, procures launch services and delivers on-orbit capabilities faster and more frequently than ever before, while sustaining ranges for the United States Space Force and commercial partners. Battle Management Command, Control and Communication delivers tactical and operational command and control capabilities to warfighters, facilitating timely and quality battle space decisions for the joint all-domain fight. Space domain awareness and combat power maximizes the full characterization of space using a wide range of multi-domain assets by rapidly detecting potential and real threats to our nation and allies which enables decisive action in the space domain. Communications and positioning, navigation and timing ensures the delivery of resilient capabilities across the acquisition life cycle from prototypes to systems on the production line to systems our warfighters have been operating for years. Space sensing delivers space-based battle space awareness through missile warning, tracking, environmental monitoring, and tactical intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Our adversaries fully intend to disrupt, degrade, and destroy the U.S. and our allies' ability to access and operate in space. Not on our watch. Space Systems Command is focused on creating and sustaining resilient lethality in space through systems integration, unity of effort, and digital engineering ecosystems. At Space Systems Command, space starts here. At T minus six minutes and 45 seconds, the SpaceX team continues to count down for launch of our fourth operational Falcon Heavy flight, and all systems are go. 
Following a successful static fire this past Tuesday, Falcon Heavy rolled out to the pad with the payload at 5.45 a.m. and went vertical about four and a half hours later. Now, before we began the webcast, the SpaceX NY launch director... Booster, RP1 load is complete. The SpaceX launch director pulled the members of the launch team and got a go for propellant loading and launch. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, engine full power, and lift off of USSF 67. Go Falcon Heavy, go Space Force. Chamber pressures are nominal. T plus 40 seconds into flight under the power of 5 million pounds of thrust. Power and telemetry nominal. Falcon Heavy is headed to space. Now we did throttle down the engines around the T plus 40 second Vehicle mark. supersonic. In preparation for max Q. Max Q. And great call out there that we have passed through max Q. That's the largest mechanical stress on the vehicle on ascent. And incredible, incredible views there on your screen. Falcon Heavy in flight. Now, next events coming up will be booster engine cutoff, or BECO, followed by separation of the side boosters and followed by their side booster boost back burns. And then will be center core main engine cutoff, or what we call MECO. Again, those events coming up here just under a minute away. That will be BECO. That's where the booster the side boosters engines will shut down. The center core will push those side boosters away from the vehicle. Then those two side boosters can begin to make their way back down to earth with their boost back burns. And on your right hand screen, you could see the views from each of those side boosters. Really incredible views here. Again, we will have Biko, side booster, boost back burn, followed by main engine cutoff of the center core here in just a few seconds. Side booster separation. Side and core booster startup. Incredible views. We just had Biko and separation of the side boosters. And you can see on your left hand screen that the side boosters have lit back up. They are now in their boost back burn, making their way back down to earth. Now those side boosters are returning to Florida under the power of three engines. That's three of the nine M1D engines. Next up will be the conclusion. Next up will be the conclusion of those side booster boost back burns, followed by Miko on the center core, as well as stage separation of the center core and the second stage, and then SES-1 or second stage engine start one. Now, as I mentioned previously, per the request of our customer, we won't be showing second stage views after SES-1. And additionally, our center core or stage one is expendable today, so we will not be attempting to recover that vehicle, but we should have some great views like we are seeing right side now. Core, boost back, shut down. We should have some great views of those side boosters touching down for landing. We go. Stage separation confirmed. And back start. And excellent views. We had the Stage one FTS is to say has saved. We did have the shutdown of the boost back burn. 
and you could see the coast of Florida in the background. That boosters are transonic. Now that landing burn coming up here in just about 20 seconds or so. Landing burn will last about 20 seconds long. Again, we are scheduled to land on landing zone one and landing Booster zone landing two. Burn. And there are those landing burns have begun on the side boosters. So let's watch as they touch down. Stage two is on thermal guidance. Stage two FTS is saved. Booster landing leg deployed. What an incredible sight to see as we watch the Both side down. boosters touch down for landing. That confirms successful landing of both Falcon Heavy side boosters on landing zone one and landing zone two. Now with these two side boosters, this marks the 163rd and 164th overall successful landing of an orbital class rocket. It's also the 25th landing on landing zone one and the sixth landing on landing zone down. two. And with successful confirmation of our side boosters landing, that will bring today's webcast to a close. Insertion. Now, we'd like to thank the United States Space Force for entrusting us with today's mission. Thank you to the Range and the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing today's launch. And we'd like to thank all of you, our viewers, for tuning in. Now, if you're interested, head over to our website and social media platforms for updates on our next missions and milestones. We hope that you all enjoy the rest of your weekend. And we'll see you again soon.